So we had quite a few questions from YouTube subscribers, and I couldn't answer them, so I need some help here. Hey YouTube, it's Faye. And for today's video, uh, still cold here in San Antonio, but this is a special little bonus slash interim <laughs> video where I'll be answering your questions that you posted in my last video, Super Saga Part 3. So thank you so much for your questions for both me and Danny. I'll start by answering some of the questions that I can answer for you, and then I'm gonna hop right into the Q&A session that I had over with Danny at Hill Country Performance. So first of all, I had a lot of people ask me what sort of oil I was using. I covered this a little bit already, but I'll cover it some more. Uh, that is Valvoline VR1 Racing Synthetic in 2050. Uh, not recommended if you have a VVTi engine, but the 7M really likes it. And hate on it all you want. <laughs> I'm used to it, and I've heard plenty. So uh, bring on the hate. But you saw the result of that. So um, obviously, it worked great for me. Might not work good for you. The second question that I've been getting a lot is, what sort of chickens are they? <laughs> uh, they're bearded silkies. That's right. Bearded, bearded silkies. They're so soft and they're so friendly. This is Luna, and this is Lilith. And uh, they're my little buddies. They just hang out with me while I work on stuff, so. All right, go be free. <laughs> and now for the more technical questions or those directed specifically at Danny. Let's go to Hill Country Performance with my interview with him and let's hop right into it. So one question from Rick West. How hot would an oven have to be to accomplish the same task? So how hot does your oven get? You wanna get? get about 380 degrees. Okay, so that's, that's that's, 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 that's pretty close, but it, it's, it's, you're going to learn by different heads. The thicker the head, the thicker the structure, you're going to have to put a little more. The, uh, basically, you want to go all the way till the danger zone, till the seats and guides fall out. So, so it's, the oven's right. a heck of a lot hotter than Yes. The, oh, yes, yes. When, it, when it's in the oven, we couldn't touch the head. Right. Yeah, and it goes up slowly, and then you take it up to the heat, but then that's why it takes all day long. Once you're up to the heat for so many hours, then you got to start slowing it down and come back. And then the next day you check and go, oh, a little bit more. Or when you're first doing it and you just don't want to waste time, you over tighten it. Oh my God, I over straighten it. Gotcha. Pull it back off, flip, flip, flip it upside down, like and straighten six, it the opposite way. Four to six to eight hours. It, it takes at least eight or? hours because okay. because it's going to be about four hours in the heat, right? But you can't just take it up there super hot. So I just sit there and I start bringing it up, bringing it up to temperature. Once it's hot, I'll go in and open the door. And actually, I have a laser, but I spit on it, and, you know. So you just <laughs> you can tell when it's when it's hot, and then you're going to hold it there for that long. But a smaller head, if you do the same procedure, you're going to end up over over straining the head. Some heads don't take that long. Gotcha. And if you're like me, who want to ease up on it, then I'll get it ease up on it, and then I'll shut it off and let it let it cool all night. You know, so I'll, I'll sit there at the end of the day, start turning it down, turning it down, and then leave the oven closed. In the morning I come in, it's still warm, but it's, it's good enough to get it, you know, open it up. Then I check in a little bit more, and then it's easier to, to sneak up on it than... So it could take days. Yeah, that's why they don't do it. I mean, that's why this other way is really, it's you know, the, way to, the way to do it. But, you know, you're going to have nice areas that ain't going to work. But, um, so, do roughly about, about the 380. Okay. You, if you do it at 380, so you're, you're not going to drop more any more than seats. engine operating temperature. Yes. Question for Danny from Christopher Baker. Do you do heads for the older Mercedes Benz diesel engines? The, the Mercedes, older Mercedes, remember I told you before? Uh -huh. That was the first aluminum head we ever saw in yeah. the shop. Yeah, I actually yeah. have that clip too. I should. I but should that, that was one, that. Of the, one of the first heads that were aluminum that were coming in the shop. We were, that's one of the things that also people do is they've been doing it forever, and all of a sudden the aluminum heads start coming in. You're doing the same procedures for a cast iron head on an aluminum head. So that's when you learned. Yeah, and you kind of pioneered. You had to figure technique. this stuff out because you can't use the same procedures. Like everybody that's out there and they're dropping seats, dropping seats, dropping seats. I know what you're doing. You know, you're using the same uh, uh, interference fit of a cast iron head. Well, aluminum is going to expand. I don't want to say exactly twice the rate because some guy is going to read aluminum and go, well, no, it doesn't. It's to, to, I tell everybody, just as, as in jest, it's going to expand at tw twice the rate. It's going to expand a lot more than in the block. You can heat up the block to 300 degrees, it's gonna expand maybe a thousands, you know, a thousand and a half. It ain't gonna expand that much. The the piston is gonna expand in the cylinder, that's why you leave piston clearance. So the, the piston clearance that's in there, it's not, let's say you run a forged piston, you run at 5,000 clearance. It's right, not running at pistons. five, yeah, it's not running at 5,000 clearance. It's 5,000 clearance when it's cold. As soon as it heats up to open temperature, it's the exact same clearance as a cast piston, identical. Huh. So people go, oh, you leave a lot more clearance, it has piston slap. When you first fire it up for 30 seconds, it's gonna have a little bit if you leave it that loose. But when it's running, it's running identical clearance as a cast piston. 
but uh, uh, forged piston expands a lot more. It doesn't have as much silicon in it. The more silicon you put in it, we get a tall aluminum. It expands Ooh. more. So, That's you, another video coming. yeah, you need to know how much. <laughs> you need to know how much the, the the piston expands. The block doesn't expand that much. So, so the Mercedes heads were the first aluminum ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So and that's the first ones. That's how I started learning with the Mercedes. Oh, the diesel, the diesel ones. Those were the first ones. The, the Mercedes diesel and the gas. We do a lot of the old six cylinders. There's not as many of them anymore, but we used to do a lot of them. That was when you started having to learn this stuff. I mean, you know, because you just, you know, you wanted to do the work. But Mercedes was the first ones I remember coming in the shop, like in the '78 or something. I don't want to say how old I am, but you know, <laughs> it was. I remember it was. It was the Mercedes. It was the Mercedes heads. There, there wasn't a lot of aluminum heads. There wasn't a lot of aluminum heads. They were all cast iron. They yeah. Cast iron. Oh, and that actually that brings me to another question. Um, I think I read that one. Which oh, what, no, you, no, that is the same. Oh, let me make sure that I've got the that I got the right one. <laughs> the, the next one that I had up from Kurt Zimmerman. Can he straighten a crankshaft? Yes. What? No way. Lethal weapon. One, you're one of the guys that don't. You know, you're all. I think there's a few whatever, people. One of, and you can't straighten this. You can't straighten that. Lethal weapon is a very good one. Three years ago, we built this motor. It's a big block Chevy. Has a hole about that big on the side of it. You can go in there and look at the cam and look at the blocks. I the saw Elaine responding. Yeah, but put that video because because okay. for all the naysayers that say you're you're changing the metallurgy, you're doing it, you're making it soft, it ain't gonna work. One of my buddies that I got the dyno from, Toyota, IndyCar, he saw me welding the cylinder head. He says, well, that's, man, you're amazing. Well, that's pretty, but it ain't about being pretty. You just soften the head. Are you going to send the head out and get re -annealed? And I said, well, no, I've been doing this, you know, I grew, I, you know, I grew up welding aluminum. I just, you know, but I had to teach myself how to do this stuff. And he says, well, it doesn't matter. We're talking about, about the head and you softened it. It ain't never going to hold the head gasket. And you're doing a blown big block, even worse. It ain't never going to hold the head gasket. Well, we welded the head from one side to the other. The crank was bent. The block had a hole in it. That's why the crank was bent. It chunked a rod out the side of the block. The crank was bent. So we straightened the, the crankshaft, which you fatigue the crankshaft when you straighten it. We straightened the crankshaft. We welded cast iron the side of the block. We welded the head from one side to the other. It's three years, still running. Yeah, still running. That was just a patch motor just to get him to where he can drive the truck while we build his real motor. Right, well, okay, so when, that, that's the video that Elaine linked to. Yes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna that's put a that, so check it out. Motor, so, Lethal, lethal weapon. Lethal weapon. It's, and I, I remember you telling me the story before about it because originally you were just like, hey, let's actually build a motor for it. But he just wanted to sort of keep going with what he had for as long as possible. And he was thinking this is going to last a season. And then we didn't think a season. We just thought a couple of races. Just to go out there just and, so could and have a motor in the truck. The, so yep. because, you know, he, until we built the, 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 the real motor. And and then we, 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 we cut boost down on it because it was too fast. It, it can't keep, it's a full size truck, a full size SS 454, street legal truck, power windows, power seats, and he races against the street outlaw guys. Yeah, that's the one that you told me that beat, that beat the guy. He, he just had a race against uh, Ladybug, and then Ladybug that's, just lost yep. against an Asian. Yep. Farm truck and Asian went down a race, and it's this thing that just keeps going. We had three boxes of blown up pistons. And all he different ones. welded that engine back together and it's still going three years later, y'all. Yes, so. and the question is, and can you straighten the crankshaft? Okay, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we question. straighten it, and <laughs> I think the question was, can uh, you, you know, you should probably straighten a, a, a crank on a hydraulic press. That's exactly, yes, been there, done that. Yes, you can use a press <laughs> I, to straighten your crank out. I was just, I was imagining that, uh, that a crankshaft would just break instead of bend. It was a forged crank. You know the difference of forging and, and casting? We'll get another video that's called <gasps> cast, that cast pieces. People want to know why, uh, can cast not flex and a forge flex or why does stuff crack well you got casting they made a mold just like you do when you pour plaster in a mold mm -hmm. okay you but they're pouring cast iron so they get cast iron they're adding carbon which is bad no carbon good we know carbon good <laughs> we have a video about that yes. coming too that's so a... <laughs> they mix up this 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 metal with iron carbon all the different things and they pour it into a mold it cures it, it cools off and the mold comes apart how can you tell if it's cast or if it's forged look at the parting line the parting line is sharp like a razor blade because it's the mold got broken. Yep. Okay. That's very, not, I don't want to say not very strong because some of the nitrous motors were actually lasted longer with the, with the cash crank than the forge crank. We don't want to go there, but the, the, the molecules in that are just a bunch of air pockets inside. It, it couldn't have air pockets because it's poured. So you, they want no air pockets, but you got a bunch of little molecules. So if you were to break a cast piece, it's coarse and the molecules are, yeah. just, are just, you know, real jagged. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Because don't they, aren't some um, connecting rods made that way and then they're broken apart and then That's you can the kind of see crack how... rod. It's the newest, the newest technology. And we're going to crack rods and why they're better than a non-crack rod. Oh. And it's because they, they don't move. Because the, when, when it's a flat cracked, surface it, there. It, it, yes. 
But that's so are those special. cast then? Th those so are cast and broke. So when you take them apart, yeah, but and then you can see sort of how rough they are. That's the model. Yes. So it's so it's broken, and all those jagged pieces because it it doesn't break straight. Okay, that's it. Now you got to forge crank. Okay, forge or crank. forge anything. Forge piston. Forge anything. He's else. the one staying on task this time. Normally I keep him on task. So he's staying on topic. Is it we're going on the to forging? <laughs> we're talking about about crank. But okay. No, no, no. We're so, still on the crank topic. <laughs> okay. A forging. If you were to cut it in in half, um, it looks like a tree with all of the wood grains in it. It has grains. So a forging starts off as a piece of metal that gets hammered when it's cherry red. And it gets hammered and it gets hammered and it gets forged into the shape it's getting in. And then a crank is a twisted forged. So all of the throws are aiming one way and then they twist the crank in it. So if you watch the forging line, which is a fat line because it's been hammered into shape, it's not cast, it ain't poured into a mold. It's a piece of metal that gets hammered, hammered, hammered into the shape of a crank. And then they're all the crank throws are aiming one way. While it's hot, they twist them. Twisted forge crank. There we go. And if you were to cut the crank, the grain in there is actually from top to bottom long grains. Wow. So it's just like a Damascus steel. You ever watch any of the guys that are making knives? No, but I kind of want to. I oh, want, for I forging, want to see them gonna... twist the crank. When yes, it's and there's pot. some great videos on you know YouTube. We gotta get there's some great videos on, on making a crank shaft. Huh. You see them hammering it, hammering it, hammering it, and then they get it back cherry red again. That's the same way they, they make a knife. The reason that the Japanese knives are so strong is because they're forged and they're hammered and they're hammered. So the, they keep on bending the metal into each other, into each other, rehammer, rehammering it. You can't break that knife because the grains are now twisted in that knife. A knife that you hit and snaps and breaks is because there's no grains in it. It's cast. It's you know. It's so that's the difference. So forging is real strong. So when a forged, you can bend it and bend it back. You can you can bend it, bend it. It'll flex and won't break. On a nitrous motor, for whatever reason, is getting totally off subject and kind of. Um, we we're having this one engine that every year had never broke a crank or nothing, but when we magnaflux the crank after the end of the season, it's cracked. So we. You, you, you know, can the crank, that's why we, we, you know, we mag it so we don't have a failure on the track, put a new crank in there. Well, three years into this, it's getting expensive and he's like, you know what, I can't afford cranks anymore. Put a cash crank in there. I can't afford, just put a cash crank you have on the floor and I, if it blows up, it blows up. But I mean, I'm buying a forge crank every year and you know, I'm, I'm done, let's just put a cash crank in it. We put a cash crank in, it runs all season, doesn't break. We mag it and it's not broken. And then we, you know, we, we go and go for two years. So what, it's weird, I don't know, I can't explain it, but the cast crank would absorb more harmonics, I guess, and the shock of nitrous, and it didn't break, it was weird, it was weird. You shouldn't run a cast crank with nitrous, but in this particular instance, the forge cranks were cracked every year. Now it was a lot of nitrous, and it's, uh, uh, nitrous is just a shock. The, the cylinder pressure spikes. Yeah, we've all seen Fast and Furious. Yes. <laughs> it spikes just extremely quick and then you're done. Huh. So, so, yep. so, okay, so there you go. Uh, okay, so you can, you can straighten, straighten a, a crankshaft. Crank and yes, it's done on a press. And on a press. And crank shops have a straightening press. But you could do it on the same press I showed you. You know, you, you could. We, you know, we use a straightening press for, for crankshafts. It's on V blocks, but it's on V blocks and you, you just press it in the center. And that, that's it. And we, we straighten that one out without turning the crank. You normally can never do that. You straighten it and then you cut the crank 10 thousandths. And then you have it rehardened because you cut through the hardness and that's all the thing. And then, you know, on I had a, on I had imports, a couple people ask about hardness or having to do some sort of procedure that's it's escaping me right now um, on the head after. We, 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 didn't, we didn't change the annealing on the head. Everybody asks, now the head's soft and all of that. And the tension is in it. Remember I mentioned the tension is still in it, you know, but it's you bolt it down on yeah. the head and then the engine gets up to operating temperature it's, and, and it's, it's gonna we're fine. It's the yeah. same it's the same tension that was, you know, if you overheat it and make the head real soft, it'll be straight, but it won't hold a, a thing anymore. But Savando Cuellar's lethal weapon proves that thing was excessively overheated. It was excessively, you know, cracked, it blew on one side, we did tons of TIG welding. That head is so soft it's not even funny. But we got three years and it's running. So you know, link in description yeah. to watch that video three years later. So, That's so it. Danny remembered a question or a question was, somebody asked about. It. He said, "All heads are bent. All heads have a bow in it." <laughs> wrong. I don't want you know say you're wrong, and I didn't want to say anything you know. But all machine work is done off the deck. When you blueprint something, all all the measurements are done off the crankshaft centerline. So the crankshaft centerline perfectly flat. The top of the deck of the block, perfectly flat. If you're going to blueprint, you measure from the front and the back of the block off the crankshaft centerline. Camshaft centerline must be parallel with the deck and the crankshaft centerline. 
You got a belt that's riding in the front. You don't want a head that's crooked this yeah. way and the belt riding forward. You don't want a, a, a belt riding this way. You don't want it bent in any way, shape, or form. So that's why it's real, real critical that it be flat. Yeah. If all the measurements are done off of a parallel plane, how can you have something bent? That's why it's real critical. Now I know what you're saying. I just kind of ignored that question because yeah. I was like, that's. <laughs> well, it, it, it's, it's, it, and it's, but now you understand why it's so very important that it be straight mm -hmm. and no one does it. And then somebody else asks, are we going to have to cut the seats and the guides again? Uh, uh, that's another good question because yes, here's the other thing. And the answer was, we, I tried to put a long answer, Elaine answered that one and that's like, yes, but no, here's the deal. If the head was bent, but no machine work is done and now we straighten it. I've done them where the seats all come back in and everything. But the head is bent so the seats get oval. Now the machine shop goes in and does a bad job. Now it comes in here and I straightened it. Well, guess what? These seats were, were, were machined with a bent head. Right. So th that's not because of Toyota's fault, but now when we straighten it, we're going to have to go back and remachine the seats. Right. So, yes. So but it's a case by case basis. It's a case by case. If, if the head has, has, has never been done before, there's a good chance when you straighten it, it's a real simple valve job. You're not going to have to cut a lot on the valve job. I have done it, you know, occasionally where, man, we just left the valves in there and, and you're ready to go. But once you've done machine work on a bent head, everything's out the door right and we don't we don't know anything right okay. okay so case by case basis on that one there you go. um another one that i was interested in um can this be done with cast iron heads you no. kind of already answered this but uh kind of, kind of, but well ajs two 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 andy all right andy um cast iron isn't going to have this problem a, because cast iron is only going to flex to thousands and a half. You may have a blown head gasket, an area that got hot, but you're not going to bow the head. A, it's cast iron, and if it bowed that much, it would crack. Gotcha. Remember the, the, the model, yep. you know. And totally. the only overhead cast iron heads are not very many of them. When we first started out, it was opal. It was it was opal and Vega were the only ones that were cast iron head overhead. But now we have the Ford, Ford little uh, uh, Pinto or Mustang. But you're not going to have that problem. A cast iron is not going to do this. Right. And, and there's not a lot of cast that's, iron over here. That's what I thought, but I wasn't, I wasn't entirely sure. Okay, so another one from John Klaus. If it didn't take, could you still do an oven straightening? Kind of take the quick spot heating approach, and if you don't get it, then go in the oven? Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Somebody's thinking. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, this isn't a, there isn't a one answer for everything, and, and most definitely. If you know, most definitely, good, good question. Especially good question. if you didn't overdo it. You if know? you didn't, if you didn't overdo it, like I said, have I overdone one before? I'm not gonna, you know, I guess it'd be wrong to say, oh no, they come out perfect every time. No, when I was first learning, you know, overstraining is the first thing because you want to get it done real fast. Yeah. But then yeah. you got to go back and do it again. So Patience. then, I, then I've learned, I'd rather take a little more time now and not do it twice. Yep. But you, you're not gonna. The more experience you get, the, the the better you'll hit it. We got real lucky. We hit it in the first time. Yeah. But it's not. Don't. If you don't hit it the first time, no. And yes, you can go in the oven. It can go in the oven afterwards. Perfect. Seth Hollis says, you could ask Danny if using an AC TIG welder could substitute for the torch. Might be a little bit more newbie friendly. Yes. Yes, you could. Not everybody has an AC TIG welder in their, <laughs> in their home shop, but most definitely, yes. I haven't thought about that. Cool. Um, um, it, does the, it does the same thing because you don't have to add, you don't have to add aluminum. You don't have to add 4043. Also, on the, the welding, I've, I've really tried with the different alloys. We won't get into that. But you could. You could sit there with the TIG and really focus on a spot and do the exact same thing. It may even be less invasive because the heat's really? not, not, not blowing sideways. Oh. You're just controlling one little spot. So, yes, very good. I'm going to try that. And, and see, you learn. Is you that know, Hollis? There's no stupid Killed questions. It. Well, some <laughs> oh, are stupid. Well, you know, well, I don't we know this one. We, no, there's no stupid <laughs> Um... Oh, no, I didn't say that was a stupid question. The no, one, the one before. I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna ignore that one. Um, so Stephen Bauer asked, "What's the cost difference between doing the oven and the less invasive method?" And my thought on this was obviously it's gonna be a case by case because there are some where the it's, less invasive a, still needs a full valve it's the job. Same. Or it's, it's, it's the same. We're gonna, we're gonna charge you the same. We're not gonna charge you. If I can get it done that way, you get it, you get it out quicker. And and but it's, it's the same thing. It's, they're 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 both still straightening, and yeah. we don't charge you a different for one way. Sometimes I end up doing it that way. And then I end up having to go back that way. Yep. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. The straightening fee is the straightening fee. Even though some take longer, some take less. We just, you know, say. Cool. Here, but somewhere <laughs> else. And know. furthermore, on on Stephen's question, said now overhead cam heads are different um, because the bores of the cam bearings won't line up if the head isn't straight. One question I would ask at this point is, 
is doing an align hone for the cam journals similar to what is done for main bearing journals um, and is that an acceptable alternative to straightening the head in terms of cost and reliability no that's very no but yes no 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 that it's it's very it's exactly it is the exact same procedure as as line honing a block mm -hmm. okay but just like in line honing a block you don't want to change your your crankshaft to camshaft center line because we can shorten it and then our m most people aren't going to have an adjustable timing gears like you most people aren't going to know how to i haven't shown those yet yeah oh okay so, <laughs> that's okay maybe part, by the time this video four, goes out yeah. or something. <laughs> so most people are going to have and most people don't know how to, how to degree cam so most people i would say you know walk away because you're gonna you're gonna mess it up more, more than get it right so that was but, one of the hardest things we've ever done and but that's that that's, like all day yeah <laughs> and and if you're like me you keep doing it over because you want to you know n numbers are numbers yeah. so either they're, they're either right or they're wrong but so most people aren't gonna do that when you shorten it the belts are only the same length we're not changing the belt but yet we've sh shortened the distance from the crank to the cam what's gonna happen the same length the cam position is gonna be different so now your valve timing is totally off I didn't even Think you know it'll that. run but most people are, are when it goes in a shop all they care about is that when you put it back on it has compression it has compression it doesn't miss that's all the shop cares that because after that point it's on you oh you didn't know how to tune it oh then take it to another shop take it to a tuner take it to something well a if you change those distance so just like in doing a, a main bore you don't want to cut the bottom of the when you flip a block upside down cut on the caps don't cut on the block Zero in on the block and cut on the caps, and then you haven't changed. You, you know, we we can sometimes can do five tenths of a thousands only, because you're just cutting the caps to make the hole smaller. It's round. You cut the cap, you bolt it back down. The hole isn't the same size anymore. And then you come back and you bore it back oh, to the original okay. size. Okay, you were just. I had a million questions oh. that you just answered. <laughs> yeah, so, so on the cam, that's the, the same way. If we're gonna do a cam, it's gonna be bowed this way. Okay, center up here, center up here. As you get to the center, you're going to be cutting a buttload, 30,000s on this one, 15,000s on the center, on the center. But theoretically, if you just s s scratch the ends when you set your, your, your line borne up, then you really didn't lower the cam center any. But the head's okay. really butchered up real bad, but it's going to work. And then, but you know, it's just, you just cut a lot. It's, you, if you Would just that cause like back, uneven pressure on when you're bolting down the cam? No, that's another it, good question about somebody answered. That's right. We an uneven pressure on the cylinder. That's okay. Oh, I, I missed. I missed that question. That was so, actually a good okay, question, uh, um, and we had a good answer that. Uh, but Elaine took it off because I was a smartass. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't being a smartass. I was just answering the way that I answer. I guess I'm a smartass. Right? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think context. It's it, you know, being able to hear you say it versus you know, someone reading it that can take it. Yes, and they, it, people get offended. Yeah, oh, people get oh, So okay. <laughs> so in it's, it's exact same, exact same, exact same as doing uh, the lower end, the main. But but, but we're doing the we're, we're doing the head, and it's very cr crucial. It's very crucial. You could you couldn't really line hone it because the head's warped these pads in the center are taller you bolt it down and you sit there and start honing well guess what you're honing the bottom and you're honing the tops of the end ones because that's what's keeping your bar in the yep. center yep. so as you tighten it it's only tightening the end ones and the center here so you're going to sit there and hone and hone and hone so the correct procedure would be to line bore it and then line hone it afterwards line bore to within two tenths and then all you're doing is using a line hone for a hone finish in there to actually, some of the awesome zoner heads have a hone finish on it, but not all. I'm not saying that line boring is bad or because to other than, than line hone. There's some manufacturers that line bore and line hone. I'm like, man, these guys are badass. <laughs> but so yeah, it's the exact pr procedure. Okay. It's the exact same procedure. Cool. So before I forget about the one about, about the torquing of a head. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay. Or, 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 or in, in, the, the cam caps in sequence in, and the head in sequence? Yes, yes. Okay, here's the deal. The torquing of the head or untorquing of the head in sequence is so that you don't screw it up. Not just that Toyota doesn't screw it up. They know what they're doing. <laughs> it's so that you don't screw it up. Here's the deal. All manufacturers, when the head goes down, they have a machine and they got 24 bolts, 40, whatever, all of them, they all bolt down at the same rate. You've seen the machine. I don't know if you've ever seen any videos. I love watching just uh, the assembly lines. Uh, yeah, like actually, I've seen it in person too. Oh, this, it's amazing. And so they bring a rack down and all the bolts <laughs> bolt down. That machine didn't go in sequence. It didn't need to. It put pressure even evenly. Evenly. The yeah. head is perfectly straight and it's real crucial because you tighten one bolt more than the other, you bend the head. 
Yeah. You, you're going to bend the yeah, head, and yeah. the cam it has to be perfectly right. Well, the manufacturer that that torque sequence and re, un, and removal se, removal sequence is not for them. They don't need this. They're, per, they're perfection. They have a machine that goes Chevy, Ford, Chrysler, everybody. It's for you, so that you don't screw this thing up. So here's very important things that that are very very important. Okay, never take a cylinder head off aluminum hot. Mm -hmm. It must be overnight cooled. Why? As you start unbolting it, it's hot. And you release the tension on one side, but it still has tension on the other yep. side. That's why the reverse sequence is there. So that you start releasing it from the outside in and you, you work, you're working with back in the way you torque it. The, the reason it's torqued in sequence is so you don't go bending it. Tighten one end all the way down. That's why here, you know, we, I go to, you know, like you, you do like you should do, is do everything by hand. And then go to 20 pounds. I go to, you know, 30 pounds, 40 pounds, 50 pounds. I keep on bringing it up yep. unless it's a torque to yield and a torque to yield, but you still go in sequence. Yep. But it must be removed in sequence. Mm -hmm. and it must be removed completely cold but no it's so that you don't mess it up it's not that that was the question i wanted to say no it's so that you don't screw it up taking it off <laughs> Chota knows what they're doing and that's why i let my car sit for so long after it stopped running yeah because i was letting it get cold okay not because i was depressed you <laughs> there <laughs> no, you go it was it was perfectly cooled you want yes. to make sure it was perfectly cooled. exactly there exactly so all right. all right that finishes up our q a session thank you so much to everyone who asked thoughtful, good questions. Good questions and, are good. <laughs> good questions are good. All right. All right. On to part, whatever this next one's going to be. Something, Four, okay. five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, then awesome. Let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to ask a question for my next video, then hit the notification bell so that you know right away when I post a video and then I can see your questions and ask them next time. All right, see you in my next video. Okay, bye. Well, you were nice and white, and now you're dirty. <laughs> Why are you dirty? What you doing? What you doing?